Good afternoon. My name is John Berry, and I'm going to be showing you Modio Health OneView full credentialing and provider management solution. Uh, you'll notice we're here on our desktop here. The first couple of things we're going to see is we have live help available here. Uh, we also have training videos and support uh, here. In addition to that, when you're brought on board uh, by Modio Health, you will have an onboarding liaison, Landon Goodson, who will reach out to you uh, and help you with your workflows, setting you up and bringing you into the software system. Uh, the software is fully customizable. So by that, I mean, we can set up these workflows however we want to do it here. So we've got some different facilities. We've got different regions. We've got different specialties. We will help make these workflows exactly what they need to be for you as well. Uh, we can also have these drop downs and separate your multiple practice locations if you want to as well with different tax ID numbers. And we store all our pertinent uh, billing and tax ID numbers for our facilities right in here on these screens right here. Uh, in addition to that, you'll notice that we do have reporting available. We can download any of these reports into Excel and CSV files. Uh, we do have some pretty uh, facility or recredentialing reports here uh, involved in the software uh, embedded into it that we can make for you as well. Uh, any sort of customer reports or uh, any fields missing in our reports for you, we'll turn that around for you in a couple of days, and that is included in our price as well. Uh, you'll notice that we do have these provider cards right here, and like cards, we can shuffle them any way we want to. Uh, think of this as a deck of cards. So uh, Dr. Abu here can live in two different facilities. You'll notice he's living in Decker Health and in the general surgery category. So if we want to go ahead and shuffle him around and have him working at another facility, so let's say we want to move him over to Modio East Coast, we can do that easily, save him, and now he's affiliated with Modio East Coast. So if we go down there in our drop down, we will find Dr. Abu right there as well. So as easy as it is to move him around, we can also take him out of these categories at any time that we need to. So going back to the main uh, view of our uh, Demo practice here, you'll notice it is a demo practice. These are real physicians uh, with some fake issues. We have Modio emails on most of these. Uh, one thing that we'll know is these uh, provider cards are what we're going to store all of our pertinent information, all our 100 to 120 points of information that we need, data points that we need for credentialing, uh, for all parts of credentialing, whether it's uh, onboarding, facility, payer credentialing, uh, checking state licenses and renewing them, any part of the credentialing period, we store those under these cards here. We can have these cards live in multiple facilities and in multiple drop downs. Uh, the first thing you're going to note about this is going to be our issues button. So if we come in here to our issues, uh, you'll notice that we're tracking what we like to call the showstoppers of medicine, state license, DEA, state controlled substances, ABMS, OIG, uh, CAQH we can track as well. Any sort of other certifications that we or certificates and certifications or boards that we want to track, as well as any sort of document that we want to put an expiration date to and track those documents documents as well. You'll notice anything in red here is expired and anything in yellow is coming down to expire soon. Uh, we can go ahead and filter through these however we need to. If we want to send out a message to these providers and say that they have uh, state license issues coming up uh, and they need to act on them, we can send that out, send them a nice message and tell them to take action on those state licenses. Uh, you can put it to all contacts. I've got myself in there as an administrator as well. And we can also send those to all coordinators as well. So you'll, one thing you'll notice is we've got a lot of these different drop downs so we can send an alert off of each one of these uh, if i want to go out and sync i believe this is the washington board of medicine you'll notice that left side is the data that we have on modio health for our physician the right side is direct integration into the washington board of medicine uh, there's nothing to accept there uh, real-time integrated data. Same thing for the DEA here. If I want to go out to the DEA and check on Dr. Thomas Clifford, our CMO, I'll notice that on the left side is Modio, the right side is a direct integration to the Virginia State DEA. Uh, there is nothing to accept there. If there was a change to accept, we would accept that across the platform, and anyone who had access to Dr. Clifford's information would see that, uh, that update real-time dynamically as well. If we go back out to our team folder and we want to type into one of our physicians here, uh, we know so we can take a quick glimpse of Dr. Heath, our CMO, or excuse me, our CEO's uh, credentials here at a glance. We've got his MPI number. We know we can sync with the MPPS database right here. If I go up here again, left side is Modio, right side is MPPS database. Uh, nothing to accept there, so we can go ahead and close that. We know he's tracking two state licenses, North Carolina. I can go right out directly to the North Carolina Board of Medicine. This is our second level of integration. I can see Dr. He's uh, license. I can take a screenshot and have that attached as well. 
Uh, so I can go back in here. I know we can go out to the Virginia Board of Medicine as well. Oops, excuse me, Virginia DEA. Uh, left side is Modio, right side is Virginia DEA. And same thing for North Carolina. I can sync with that as well. Uh, so again, no changes to accept there. Uh, his Virginia license, we can go right out to the Virginia Board of Medicine. Again, primary source of verification for Dr. Heath as well. So if I come back into Dr. Heath and I want to dive a little bit deeper into these data points that we have for him, you'll notice that we have all that personal data, all the uh, personal information, driver's license, NPI number is in there, uh, CAQH information. I can go through all these tabs. Uh, we store his education and training. Uh, very easy to add in another uh, facility or another school. You'll notice if we went to Duke University, it just pre-populated that information from our databases. Uh, so we do not have to look up that contact information. So we know that if he uh, wanted to go to Duke University instead of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, we could do that as well. So place for the practice employer, facilities to live. Again, I can add a facility. It will pull those uh, addresses and contact information dynamically. We got work history, our peer references living in here, uh, our, again, our snapshot of our life insurer if we're uh, tracking a state controlled substance. Uh, any certifications, very easy to come in here and add any cert. Uh, we can come in here and give them anything that we want, give it an expiration date, an issue date, and start tracking that again on that issues button. We got his MedMal, all of his healthcare payers, uh, very easy to come in here and add a healthcare payer. Uh, come in here, we'll say it's for the Modio family practice, and we can give them a new payer, uh, whether it be Blue Advantage, give that payer uh, a state, whether it's Idaho, provider number, payer status, we could be pending, uh, effective date, end date, payer description, participating or not. And then the pertinent contact information with that payer, uh, email, uh, phone number, and any sort of notes that we wanna keep for it as well. Uh, and then we dive right into the document section. In the document section, you'll notice that Dr. Heath stores over 200 documents, and these are those documents that you need to produce uh, as a provider and for credentialing uh, at different periods of time. We've got a copy of his CV. We can just take a quick look at Dr. Heath's CV. It's available right here for us if we need it. Uh, going back into that, uh, we can come out here. We can see we've got background checks, immunization for personal health in here, uh, malpractice, med mal. You notice we haven't deleted anything. We've archived it so we can keep it history. Uh, COIs, MPDP self-queries in here, uh, any sort of board score, state uh, license uh, lookups if we want to check and make sure that we've got a copy of the North Carolina license. Again, we can go right in there and we can see we've got that copy right there stored there. Uh, education, training, his diploma, no, we, no idea why we would ask for that, uh, but there's chances that the, the diploma will be asked for a doctor. Uh, we got any sort of miscellaneous doc, uh, uh, documents here, delineation of privileges, references letters, or our payer contracts, our facility applications. Again, we can track these. We can give these expiration dates uh, anytime to any of these documents and be able to track those on our issues button. So if we jump into here, we know it's very easy to upload a batch of documents as well. I can grab this whole batch of documents sitting here. I can upload them. You'll notice that our system is trying to classify those documents, much like uh, CAQH classifications. Uh, if it didn't pull it in, we can always give that. Uh, we know this is a payer contract. We know it expires uh, on 9-1. We can give this any sort of a permission, public administrator, coordinator, or private, and upload those documents very easily in one fell swoop. We can download them in a zip file as well. And plus, we can share these documents across uh, anyone that we need to. Uh, we can grab them one off. Uh, we can grab a couple of documents. We can select all of Dr. Hughes' documents, and we can send those out. Important to note, though, anyone that we give a uh, administrative or coordinator view. They can log in. Uh, they can grab these. We don't have to email them inside our facilities. Anyone who has access to Dr. He's personal information can pick up this, uh, these documents or work with his credentialing information at the touch of a button, saving time. Uh, and of course, we're done to the emails back and forth or phone calls as well. If I jump out of the and go back to our team view here, you'll notice we have a couple of things right here. So if I want to look again once more time at Dr. Heath and check his CMEs, uh, we've got a CME tracking module. He's got two different states. If we hover over each state, you'll notice the requirements, uh, any exemptions in the CME resource will come up, and you'll notice the differences between Virginia and North Carolina, and we're very easy to add a license or upload a CME right here. Again, real-time dynamic upload on the uh, coordinator administrator's end, and everybody will see that it has uh, uh, 
contact with Dr. Heath and his uh, provider card. But if I was Dr. Heath, this is a provider portal. We do try to get our physicians engaged in the process. Uh, I know that's almost like a four letter word, but getting a physician engaged uh, does mean that he has a value add. He can come, he can track his CMEs here. Uh, he can log time and expense. He can manage his credentials as well. And notice it's that same one view that I showed you as a coordinator. He can come in here and upload real time documents as well. And we would see that on that end. So CMEs come in here, manage his CME. Uh, while Dr. Heath is at a conference in Maui and he's on the beach and he wants to upload a document, he could go ahead and do that, pick a document. Uh, we could grab that content very easily, presenter and sponsor, choose a file and upload that into a hard copy, save that on there and boom, it's already uploaded to Dr. Heath's uh, profile. So us as an administrator, we could come back out here, go back into Dr. Heath. Uh, if we do that, we'll notice that we'll see in the CMEs, we've got that document now that's right down here, electronic health records. So we can go ahead and take that document off. Uh, so we know it's not a real document. We'll delete it on both sides. So very easy to come in here and uh, work from a team view and also work from the provider view. That provider has access to all of this on his uh, tablet, his uh, cell phone, uh, computer. Uh, we can go in here and uh, assign them tasks from our tasking system. Uh, we can store any sort of login information for any of our providers here. Uh, PECOS login information here, you'll notice it's encrypted. The administrator would have to put back in the password. We've hard coded that uh, site in there. So if we want to come in here and jump to the PECO site, we can. Uh, we can jump right over there and get to PECOS as well. So again, storing any logins there, uh, a task management system where we can put in micro and macro tasks, send them off to the provider as well. Uh, our form section, very easy to come in here and add a form. Uh, we would custom map those forms for you and we do that on the back end. Uh, we do charge a one-time fee for that and then we update those forms whenever they needed to be updated. That one-time fee enables you to use that form for as many providers and as many times as you need. So if I wanted to send this form and we had it mapped for Dr. Heath, you'll notice it's a Texas form. We've got an audit trail right here. I could type in a nice fancy message. I could send it straight off to the provider. It would go to Dr. Heath, but I'm sending it to myself as an administrator because I know that as an administrator, we do need to view that first before we send it to Dr. Heath. We want to pre-populate all those data points that we're storing for him. I can click send here. I've already got it in my uh, email address in my email here, so we could do this for speed. Looking at Dr. Heath, you'll notice that this thing is coming in through DocuSign, so we can sign this electronically. I'll go ahead and I will click right over here to agree to use the electronic forms and records. And again, you'll notice that all the information that we're storing on Dr. Heath on the platform has been pre-populated into this document. Uh, taking the time uh, from doing documents by hand, this could have been an hour and a half worth of documents to a couple of minutes. Very easy to come in here. We see a state licensure, everything we need. When we get to the attestation questions, very easy for it to come in here, fully editable, and we can type on any of these questions, obviously, that we don't script in on the back end. So very easy to use this document. We would send it to the provider next uh, from the platform. He can go ahead and use the DocuSign program, sign it electronically, send it back to you. It's available in his document sections and we could submit this to the payer. But for any reason that we do need to uh, have a hard copy, we know that all payers are different. Uh, we can go ahead and print this hard copy, still taking advantage of the pre-population uh, of the document print this out, have the doctor sign it in red or blue ink. We know the payers are all different. Uh, we can upload this back in the platform and uh, send it electronically, or we can send it out by paper as well. So very easy to get to our documents and pre-populate those documents. Uh, if I jump back into myself here, oops, excuse me here, I'll get out of the doctor sign program, jump back into myself. Uh, we can move over to our next feature that we added, tracking, uh, which is task on steroids, basically. You notice that we can come in here and look at any of the tasks, the uh, payers applications or any application that we're tracking, uh, any sort of process that we're tracking. We'll see what step we're in. If we're completing it on time, you'll notice that this renewal of a state license is supposed to take 36 days. We work with every facility on the back end to customize this 100% to you. Uh, it's supposed to be done in 36 days. We'll see that we were ahead of time on our first uh, or our second, third, and fourth task. We were actually behind time on our, third, our fifth task. Uh, we'll notice that we can find any bottlenecks in this process, so we can keep track of this. Uh, hopefully, this doesn't look too messy, but if it does, we can go ahead and check whoever is high priority. We can filter by that. Uh, we can filter by status. We can filter by provider name. We know that we've got several uh, instances of Dr. Heath on here. Uh, we've got different subtypes that we can filter by, so if we want to see which payer applications are in process for Dr. Heath, you know this one is way overdue, so we need to go ahead and get on this process and whoever we assigned it to.
back in. My last thing to show you is dynamically bringing in a new provider. So if we want to bring in a new provider to the facility, let's say it is Mike. Uh, let's say Mike, uh, let's go with urology. We got Mike Chang right here. So we're going to bring in Mike Chang. Uh, let's give him a department. We're going to use urology right here. Uh, we know that we can add any other title. So we know that Dr. Chang is an MD. Uh, his specialty is urology. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there. We're going to give Dr. Chang a fake email address so that we do not bother him. This is just for demo purposes right now. Uh, Mike at modiohealth.com. So we could notify the provider by email, send them any sort of document, script a welcome message, but since we're using a fake email, we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna maneuver down to urology to find our doctor, uh, right into Dr. Chang we see right now. We do see an issue. Uh, so we come in here, it says uh, his name, uh, his uh, DEA license is expired, but we're pulling from an, a uh, database of about 1.5 million providers. It's a static database for our initial pull. So we'll go right out to the DEA. We notice that we have updated information. We'll save that as well. Look, he's passed his OIG, which is always good. Uh, we can jump into Dr. Chang himself. Let's jump into here. Let's sync with the MPPS database here. Again, we've got some payer information coming in. Uh, looks like we may have pulled in some education and training. About 50% of the times we do that. Uh, we have a uh, urology clinic of Valdesta that he's affiliated with. Uh, his any certifications, nothing pulled there. We've got some healthcare payer information. So we're pulling in dynamically uh, information on Dr. Chang uh, through the system. Uh, we will go ahead and sync this Georgia state license that we found as well, uh, and then we'll fill that out. So that is a basic onboarding. Uh, we can take that a step further uh, for Dr. Chang. If we go back to urology, we want a full service onboarding. We have an onboarding module right here. You'll notice that because he has a fake email address, I don't want to go ahead and send it to him. So we'll use another one of our providers instead and show you what our onboarding module is. Now we can go ahead and fill out the rest of the information uh, for the provider, do that on our side, make it as le uh, less intrusive to the practice or your facility as possible. So if we had Gary Goldman here, we would go in and fill out all the information for Gary Goldman's uh, whether it be board search, sync all the license, do everything on the back end. Uh, but if we wanted to you wanted to use the uh, onboarding module again included with this, you'll notice that we need this. We go out to his uh, Dr. Goldman's email address, uh, very simple flat onboarding module, start adding in, he would add in his information or his practice administrator notice though, we've already pulled in his MPI number, uh, just hit save and next, 50% uh, of the time we've pulled in this information right here. But if we do, we start typing in Drexel University contact information Information would be pre-populating as well. Uh, we can fill in all this information, click save and next, any sort of hospital affiliations. Again, we can pull this in 50% of the time and have it in there automatically. So when we send this out uh, to their doctors or their practice administrators, we're looking like tech superstars. We can finish this off and then we can view that summary. Notice again, it's that same one view of the summary that you're seeing, uh, almost like a mini or a maximum CV here because we're pulling all the information we have over our doctor. Save and complete. We can add our documents in, and then that uh, provider is 100% uh, ready to go on the platform. So again, we can do this for you, a full service onboarding, or you're welcome to do that. Uh, any questions, please uh, reference uh, www.modio, M-O-D-I-O, health.com, and we'd be glad to give you a demo at any time. Thank you very much for uh, spending time and taking a quick look at our OneView program.